this easy gravel pass can be driven in any vehicle, although like any gravel road, things can get quite slippery during and after rain. It boasts an impressive height gain of 730 meters, which places it in position number 20 in the biggest altitude gaining category. The 48 bends, corners and curves will keep you busy as each bend reveals new vistas over the citrus farms of the Hamtuas Valley and the densely wooded mountains to the east. The road services a number of farms and provides an alternative and much more attractive but slower route between Potencia and Utenaig. It also is the access road to the 4x4 only and Tönisberg Pass and state level and forms part of the T3 Bavianskluv tourism route system. The road holds no apparent dangers if speed limits are adhered to, but normal farming vehicles do use this road frequently, so be aware of them. The starting point is noticeable by the large orchards on the left which are covered in grey shade netting. The gradients on this pass are quite comfortable for most vehicles and the fact that the big altitude gain of 740 meters passes by so effortlessly bears testimony to the engineer who designed the routing of this pass. There are very few places where there are steep drop-offs and mostly the pass feels like a normal gravel road drive. The first section climbs at a gradient of 1 in 16 up until the 1.3 km point where a right hand bend of 70 degrees changes the heading into the northeast, but it soon swings back into the northwest again as the ridges and foothills provide a perfect altitude gaining line. At the 3.7 km point the road enters a double apex right hand bend which changes the heading into the northeast once more. The farming town of Potensi at the foot of the pass has its origins in the Kuku language. Potensi means resting place of the cattle. Just a few kilometers east of Potensi lies the other farming village of Hanke. Dr. John Philip, who was head of the London Missionary Society in South Africa, started Hanke with the purpose of the establishment of the village, which was to grow millies and corn for the LMS main station at Bethelstorp and also to carry out evangelistic work. The graves of the missionaries are situated behind the old Philip Mance, beside the railway line and maintained by the Congregational Church. William Philip, who was the son of Dr. John Philip, studied surveying in Cape Town from 1834 to 1836. Later, he trained as a missionary in Britain, and in 1841 he returned to the mission station at Hankey. At the time, the town was experiencing a serious water shortage, and Philip therefore examined the site and discovered that he could lead water out of the Khamtus River into the settlements and farmlands. This would, however, involve the construction of a tunnel through the cliff, which for those times was a formidable undertaking. Philip and his farm labourers started digging in 1843, and within little more than a year, they had completed a tunnel of 228 metres length. The tunnel has been declared a national monument, and the commemoration plaque was unveiled on the same day as the opening of the Kocha Dam. From the 4.4 to the 6.2 kilometre point, the road levels off completely and even descends for a while. The climbing begins again at the 6.2 km mark with gradients of around 1 in 16 as the road sweeps northwards via a big S bend. For the next 5 km the road climbs very gently, never reaching more than 1 in 20 as progress is made northwards but the last part of the pass gets much steeper. Potensi is the last stop before entering the Bavijanskloof wilderness area. Guarded by the majestic Coxco Mountains, this little town's activities revolve around the citrus industry. It's become a very popular tourist destination with many B&Bs and self-catering establishments as well as fuel stops, banks and shops to choose from. History records show that in 1876, the farm Patenti of 3000 Morgan was awarded to a Mr. David Kayser Jr. In 1852, the farm was subdivided and in 1858, Potensi with an S was declared a town. At first, because all of Potensi was privately owned, town development was difficult and the citrus and tobacco co-ops had to develop their own residential areas. The first oranges were exported in 1907 by a Mr. Bean and in 1929, the Potensi Citrus Co-op was founded. Export citrus is the main crop and the season runs from April through to October.
At the 14 kilometer mark, a very tightly radiused right hand bend appears, and from this bend the pitch increases to 1 in 7, offering sweeping views to the right as the last ridge leads up to the summit point, which is marked by a radio mast at the 15.4 kilometer mark at an altitude of 826 meters.